basically ties out to it. So if you're thinking that you're going to import from QuickBooks desktop to online, it's likely that you might have to pull in these items of sub-customers. And then when you want to make them into the projects to l use the cool new feature, which might be a, a thing that pulled that that drew you into it uh, to the move, then you might have to convert the sub customers, which it looks like they're getting better at uh, making that conversion an easier thing to do. Let's go over and look at the projects. So notice the projects by default were basically on when I went in here. Uh, if they're not on, you can go into the cog up top and you can go into the account and settings and within the advanced area, you have your projects. So I'm advanced. We have the projects. They are turned on. If I click on it, you just have the toggle to toggle it on or off. So there is our projects. Once on, then do you want to leave without saving? Yes. Then you'll have your projects tab on the left-hand side. It says, run your projects with confidence. Make better decisions by knowing how your jobs are doing. You, have, you can watch a video on it profitability in one place profitability by job that is organize your project finances with a clear view of profits keep track of your uh, labor costs see where your team is spending time and how it affects your profit margins eliminate the guesswork understand which projects make money and where you should focus your efforts all right let's start the project so then the project i'm just going to call this one generic project number one and then we have to, notice there's an asterisk here. We have to assign it to a customer. So that's gonna be mandatory of the projects. Now, if I had a customer that had a sub-customer, I could assign it to the sub-customer, which again, I might still do if there was a different like billing address or something. But I'm just gonna assign this one to the parent customer so that we can do some comparing and contrasting of what the functionality looks like if we had a sub-job or sub customer versus a project. So I'm gonna select uh, Jones Guitars. By the way, you might look at the term of projects and start thinking that you would like to break out certain things that you, that like another income account, because what happens with the projects is basically we can, we can run the income statement by project that we're working on is one of the, one of the benefits that we'll basically have when we break out the projects. And we can also see it in its own little little place now uh, because now we have the projects with more functionality than we had with the sub customers. So you might think, well, what if I have a particular project in my business and I and like like I have a particular meeting or I go to a particular concert or something or particular uh, I went to a I went to a, a new a new idea for my business. And then I applied that new idea and I want to see the revenue that was generated from that new idea or something like that. That's not really what the projects are for because you have to assign it to a customer. So all of the money has to be assigned to it. So it works kind of like the jobs. What might you use that functionality for? You might use class tracking for something like that. You might use the location tracking could possibly be used and the tags. Those are the other features that can break out the income statement by column so so you so if you had a particular uh a particular revenue location or something that you went to a conference and you applied some new thing and you want to see the the profit and loss that is tagged to that new thing or that tagged to a to a certain lead generator that you made or something like that and you could tag the revenue lines and the expense lines related to that particular lead or something well then that's something you might use class tracking or more likely like tags in that case, which can still break out the income statement by that particular thing. This thing is gonna be breaking out the income statement by uh, the jobs, which have to be assigned to the customer. Okay, so in any case, let's, let's bring this back. January 1st, uh, the end date, I'm not gonna put an end date because I don't really know. And then typically when we think about the jobs, we have the, the status of it's either in progress uh, it's completed or it has been canceled. So in progress means, you know, we've started up, we've started up the job and it's, it's moving at this point in time. We're working on it. Completed, of course, means that the job is ended. So it's now closed. So it would kind of be like moving the job from the ones that we're working on to the ones that have been uh, closed and canceled means, you know, it was in progress. And then of course it has been uh, canceled. 
So let's go ahead and say, we're gonna say it's in progress. We can add notes if we need to. And then if I go into the job, here's our little thing to tell us about it. Your project at a glance, see your project's performance end to end, track income and all your costs, include, including labor. So it's gonna track everything, follow the money, see your project organized by income and costs to make sure you stay profitable. All right, and then see how time is being spent uh, you can add your team's time and know what they worked on and how it affects your project cost. So basically, we've got basically the income and the costs, which are now can be broken out by particular projects. So when I assign uh, invoices and whatnot uh, and, uh, and expenses, I can assign them to a particular project. So for example, I won't record an invoice right now, but just to show you, if we hit the plus button, We've got the invoices over here, but you can also uh, do that here by, by I'm in the project here. I'm gonna close up the hamburger and in this dropdown, you can see I have the invoice receive payment expense uh, estimate and so on and so forth. So this is another area that I can add an invoice for example. So I'm gonna say, let's just do an invoice from here. And then if I was to invoice, this would be the revenue side of things. And then we have the assigning of the project because it's assigned to project number one. It's not assigned to the sub customer, it's assigned to the project. So that, so if I close this back out and say leave without saving, I'm gonna say yes, leave without saving, that's that. And then if I had an expense side of things, money is going out, the money would still go out of the checking account, but now it's gonna go out of the checking account and I'm gonna assign it to a project. So I'm assigning it to a project over here. Why does that matter? Because when I assign it